need to. Okay, but today the goal is to take a few notes on the next section, going up one more section that I want to cover. Right? It's it's based on um, composite functions and inverse functions. So there's two parts to it. Um, so this is section one seven and technically one eight. I'm kind of mixing them together, um, but we're going to start with one seven right now, which this is called composite functions. Now the good thing about this section, why I always like to finish on this section and not go to like 9, 10, 9, or uh, 1.9, 1.10, I don't like to go to those. The reason being is that for these, uh, for these sections, especially this one, it actually reviews what domain is, which is nice. I mean, we did domain like the very first section, chapter one. Nice little review, get back in the swing of things, like what we did in the very first section, what we're doing now. Um, I want to talk about, you know, what are the basic operations with functions? I know that seems a little silly, but it is nice to review how to basically add them, subtract them, multiply and divide them, and check what the domain is. But then also, the main thing today, which is actually part of the title, this is what we're going to spend probably the most time on today, is we need to attempt to do what a composite function is. And okay, we need to look at that. Um, a composite function is when you have functions inside of another function. It is basically what I referred to a long time ago as um, functional substitution. Where you guys did this in the very first section, actually, I think it was actually the second section of this chapter, this is chapter one, where you were attempting to like plug in variables, plug in uh, numbers into an actual function, and you were trying to figure out what the answer is coming out of that thing. Well, that's what we're doing, but now we're plugging an entire function in, and you've got to simplify it down. The big thing about that is um, we do need to know what domain is, and you do need to know how to simplify it. So that's what we're going to be talking about, okay? Um, so that's kind of the goal today. It's not a lot. I mean, when you look at it, it's like, it's, I mean, we've done the red part before. So, but the, the second part is the new part. And I want to kind of mix them together so you can see kind of what we did previously, what we're doing now. Um, this is definitely a big part of Calc, uh, especially like Calc 2 and 3 when you get to multivariable. You have to be able to like take stuff and plug it in and simplify. Um, so that's kind of what we're getting into. I know it seems easy. That's great. Just, I'm hoping that we can keep this as easy as possible. But the composite thing, the weird part about today is just notation. How do they write things? How do you know that's what they mean? That's what we're going to look at. Okay? All right. Um, so let's do this first attempt here. So let's look at what domain is. So uh, I'm going to give you a function here. We're going to talk about three different types of functions. So here's my first function. Uh, let's go with two. Okay. That's a basic function, right? It's got some variables, it's got numbers and letters combined using basic operations. Um, what makes it a function is that it passes the vertical line test. Now, I'm not, I don't care to graph it. It's a parabola. I don't really care to graph it. But there's red flags to know if it is an actual function or not, right? It's not being divided by x's. You're not putting x's on the denominator. That's what would make it not a function, um, is it failed vertical line tests and stuff. It, it doesn't have. Um, like x's and y's in, in the problem. So that would also usually attempt to, to fail. Um, the idea is that when you first look at a function, how do I know what the domain is? Is there a fraction on that problem? Yeah. No. Is there any type of radical, like square root, cube root? No. no. So on this problem, since there's no radicals, there's no fractions, the domain of this problem is all real numbers. Domain is all reals. All real numbers because there's no issues. What I mean by my domain is that there's no weird stipulation of what number I can plug into this function that would cause it to like error out where your calculator couldn't actually process the answer. Right? There's no numbers that would that would cause problems. So how we can write that? You can write it like negative infinity up to positive infinity. You could write all real numbers. You could do the the set builder notation, which is like you define x. And this is um, x is um, all all numbers um, less than you know infinity and greater than negative infinity. You know, like you could write it like that, right? Um, I don't like set builder. This is stupid. It's way too many marks. I, I hate set builder notation. I prefer one of these two. I don't care which one you tell me. 
I'm betting on you did the top one a lot now, which you correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you just that's fine. There's a different sign. Oh, the the, the R, the R, yeah, the double, and the double. The double line, the R. Yeah. yeah. That's the that's the the, yeah. the notation yeah. for real numbers. There's different notations for like natural numbers, whole numbers. That's the real numbers. That's the set of all numbers you can deal with. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so if you put that, hey, I'll even accept that. That's fine because it's about as short as you can write, short and sweet. Okay. Um. Now, if we introduce a fraction to this problem, let's say that my next function has something like x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. Right? Let's say that that's my function. Well, the idea is that you, we need to graph this thing to see if there's any problem. Well, I'm not going to do that. There's little shortcuts I can tell like if, if it's a function or not. Because I'm, all I'm going to do is factor the bottom part. We did this before in previous sections. Oh, yeah. Right? We factor the part. This is x plus 2, x minus 2, and it looks like the x plus 2 is going to cancel. So my final simplified version of this function is this. Okay, that's my simplified version. There is exceptions to this problem. Those exceptions of numbers I'm not allowed to use. What are the exceptions? 2, two and negative 2. Even though it canceled out, it's called a discontinuous or a, a removable discontinuity. There's still two exceptions to this problem. You are not allowed to use positive 2 or negative 2. Because on the original problem, they caused problems here. There was a fraction. You have to throw those out. So how you write that in your actual thing, you would actually say that um, you could go, x is all real numbers, all reals, except 2 and negative 2. Um, you could, if you did the... I did the set builder note or the interval notation, you know, where I did the parenthesis idea. If I was doing a problem like that, um, I could write it like this: that it's all the numbers from negative infinity up to negative two, um, skipping negative two. Ooh, I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to run out of space. Um, so it could be negative infinity up to negative two. Skipping negative 2, um, going up to positive 2, skipping positive 2, oh, yeah. and going to positive infinity. Now you're probably thinking, okay, yeah, there's one easy way to write that. And it's the other one, right? The old school way of doing it. But I want you to be familiar with both. The reason why I want you to be familiar, this is the way the book uses it. I don't really mind. I don't care which one you use as long as you understand what you're doing. Now, one of them is removable. So that's a big deal, right? If it's removable, they they um, sometimes they, they tend to leave those out. Uh, they'll show the final answer like one over x minus two, but you still have exceptions, right? Negative two doesn't work, it, even though it canceled out. It wasn't a part of the original domain; it removed itself. Questions, comments about removable discontinuities? I think you should spell your name with the R from the all real numbers. Just. R-O, like you words. Spell your name in yeah. Greek letters. What does it say? What did you spell Okay. Just All right. Spiders. Now, um, that's that's functions when you're looking at domain and looking at what the uh, the actual uh, domains are. Now, the other exception that I talked about was if they throw radicals in there, right? They throw, um, let's say, some type of square root. So let's go, my, yeah, so my square root is um, x plus 64, and I'm going to put the square root on it. Right? Well, there's different types of radicals, right? This is a square root, has power index number two. There's the cube root and what, whatever. Um, the idea is that when you're on the even powers, even powers, you do have exceptions. You can't use negatives, you can't use positives. On the cube roots, like third roots, right? Third power, you can have negatives on the inside because you can take cube roots of negative numbers. It's totally fine. But on square roots and fourth roots and sixth roots, you can't. So on this particular problem, you cannot, you cannot use any number that would make this item less than zero. So what I would need to do first, let's set this thing equal to zero, the inside. So, so set the, you know, the item that's inside the rifle, we call that the um, dividend, right? Um, we're going to take that, that idea of the, um, that, um, the number on the inside of the radical, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually try to solve and see what would make this zero, because that's the lowest number I could use. So the idea is that when I move this across, it would make a negative 64. This is the smallest number that I could potentially use. 
Everything else has to be greater than that. So when you're writing out your domain, domain has to be, you know, you can write all real numbers greater than greater than negative 64. You can write 64. Um, I think that's too long. Um, I actually just write, like to write like this. X is greater than or equal to 64. That's the easiest way to write it. It's all the numbers bigger and equal to 64. You can have zero. You can take a radical of zero. It's just zero. Um, but yeah, that's an exception, right? We talked about that. Um, you know, the, the different forms of the items on the inside of the radical. Radicand, I should say. I think it's a dividend. You said radicand. It's radicand. It's radicand. I was saying division. It's dividend and division. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the radicand number. Um, uh, it's the number on the inside, right? Questions on how I did that, like how I figured out what was the lowest number I could use, you said equal to zero. If it's more complicated, you just gotta solve it. Um, you gotta like figure out what would make it. But the, that's domain, right? But I think most people know it. Like when you look at a problem, you should be able to tell like if there's no fraction, we don't have a problem, it's all reals. If there is a fraction, figure out what makes the bottom zero. And then those are exceptions. Even though some might can't be well, they're still exceptions. And then basic operations, okay? Uh, let's do the let's do notation of this stuff because obviously you guys are getting used to like what functions are and you guys already know how to find domain. We did that in the very first section, but how do you add it? Like, what does it look like? Because you know a lot of people know that I could, you know, you can have your functions. So let me give you a couple functions here. So let's say this is x squared plus 3x plus 2, and g of x is. 5x minus 7, and let's say that that's, that's my, my two functions, right? Well, there's different notations that they could ask. If they ask you to add the two functions together, like this, most people are very comfortable when, when you see it like that. Yeah, fine. You, could, you can put the two functions in here and actually add them together. Now, I know that there would be a parenthesis originally. What is this? Let's see. There's the plural. Um, but when you have when you have those parentheses there, and you can add them, you can get rid of them and actually add them. The problem is this is not the notation the book will use anymore. They moved on. They graduated now. The the, the actual notation they're going to use is this. They're going to they're going to say that you're going to have to add f um, the f function and the g function, and the variable that you should be using should be x's. That's the notation from now on. It means that still. Now, if they get more specific, this would be like a calc level type of uh, thing where they do some little bit of substitution. They might ask you for this. Well, now what they want you to do is they want you to add the two functions together, but then plug in two into it. Plug into your substitute. Instead of using x's now, make every x now a two. That's what they want you to do. So now this is two squared plus three times two plus two. And then I'm going to add that to 5 times 2 minus 7. Like you're plugging in 2s, if that was the case. Hmm? Not right now. Not yet. We're not there yet. We'll eventually get there. But the top one, I want you to get familiar with that. Is everyone comfortable with the notation like what this means? Yeah. Okay, the type of problem I'm going to be assigning next week sometime. Um, the types of problems I'm going to assign. Um, I'll give you a problem where they list these up above. There's a couple where there's F, G, H, and I function. And then they're going to say, oh, hey, add these together. Okay, so you just do that. Blah, 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 and you tell me what it is. Then the secondary question they always ask, what's your domain? All right, fair enough. If they want the domain, is there a fraction on that problem? No. It's all real numbers. There's no fraction, so there's no problem. So you can just say it's all real numbers or put the little capital R thing. If you want to so that's that's the type of problem that they're going to have you do. Do you think you'd be comfortable with something like that? Yeah. Now, obviously, the notation is new. So you got to you're not multiplying you're not multiplying by x. It's just that's the variable that's in your problem. It's this. They're, they're, they're trying to be fancy. They've not graduated you. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the second type. Now, second type, they're going to subtract. So they'll put a little minus sign. Same exact thing. The only problem here now is this. Now they're subtracting. What do we have to do with the subtraction sign? Distribute it to the x minus. Yeah, so it'll be negative 5x plus 7, right? You're going to have to distribute and you can subtract. Now, 
That's simple. Um, I, they, I will not ask you to plug in stuff yet, anyway. Um, that's the type of problem they're going to ask. Now, here's the, the secondary question. What's the domain? All reals. All reals. Why? There's because there's no fractions. No fractions, no rations. Same so, problem. So, so same problem. Now, next one. They put a dot, a solid dot. Multiplication. It's multiplying. It's not composites. It's a dot. They're multiplying. That means that they're doing this type of thing. I've, I've actually seen it written like this. It's the same thing. You are multiplying the two together, so you're going to leave the parentheses out, and now you're in, or the subtraction sign out, and now you're going to have to actually foil it out. First out are going to last. Well, you know, if we if we go first out are going to last, it's five x cubed minus seven x squared plus fifteen x squared minus twenty one x plus ten x minus fourteen. Right? You're just distributing first out are going to last. Blah blah blah. What's the domain? All reals. All no fractions. No fractions. We're getting to those next chapters. No, so, yeah. All right. Um, are we good with this so far? Okay. Um, the only weird one that I that I'm kind of concerned about is the next one. It's when they divide. They they take the the whatever the, your f function is and they're going to divide by g or whatever what order they put it in. That's the problem. This order may be different. You gotta figure out what's on top, what's on the bottom. And so we're dividing. So this one is x squared plus 3x plus 2 over 5x minus 7, because so the g function has to be on the bottom. If you can factor and cancel stuff out, great, fine, and dandy. But the problem is, it does have an exception now. It's not all real numbers anymore. So now there's an exception to this. Um, you have to figure out what would make the bottom zero. Because you can't divide by zero. So we'd have to, off to the side, you'd have to figure out, okay, so this equals zero, add the seven across, divide by five. Seven fives. Yeah, seven fifths, <laughs> seven fives, seven fifths. Uh, that, that's, that's the one number you can't use anymore. That's your exception. So you would actually have to say it's, you know, it's, maybe it's all reals, all reals except seven fives. <laughs> seven fifths. Okay, we're good? Okay, if there's radicals, I don't have too many of those. Okay. Are we good with the basic operation stuff? Okay, yeah. it's gonna be easy. I don't yeah. think I can do any where you have to plug in a number. I don't think. I'm not giving you um, uh, Let's go on to the next part. Let's go to the composite stuff. That's the new stuff. I want to spend the most time on that today. Okay, composite functions. We gotta go through notation, what it means, what it is. In fact, I'm gonna use these two functions still. This is a great way to do it. We'll just keep using these the whole time. All right, so composite functions. It is something composed of something else, right? Um, so the idea of a composite function, this is the notation that typically most people have seen. Um, a lot of people call it the fog method of doing it. Um, it looks like a multiplication dot, but it's a little bit open on the inside. Um, what this actually means is that we're composing g inside of f. So really, this notation means this. It means f is going to be your main function you're going to be using, but you're going to be plugging g into it. That's, these mean the same thing to me. Um, I've even seen it written like this. Um, let's see, I think. No, that'd be the same way. Um, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've seen it like g. No, that'd be one point. So, it had to be these two only. So, all right. Um, but this is like the main way of doing it. Now, let me walk you through what we have to do here, and then what we're going to do today is I want to practice two of these. So you can actually try this out, see if you're ready to go with it. All right, so we're going to be taking the f function. This is going to be my main formula, which is that one. So it's something squared my, uh, plus 3 times something plus 2 times 2, or plus 2. And so that's my main function. How I know this is the main function? The outside letter is the main thing you're doing. The inside is what you're plugging into. So what I'm plugging into these, this main function is I'm plugging g in. So g is the 5x minus 7. And that's going to go into every single spot where there was an x on the original spot. Because it's, it's the main function was f, but I'm plugging things into f. And it has to be the whole thing. So now what we have to do is we have to actually you know, simplify it all the way out. 
3 times 5x equals 7 plus 2. So you have to actually simplify this whole thing out and see what it turns out to be. So if I go first out or in your last, it's 25x squared um, minus 70x um, plus 49. If I actually foil first out or in your last correctly. Um, 3 times 5x is 15x minus 21 and then plus 2. Um, so now I can combine like terms and you know add the x's together, uh, add the whole numbers together, all that good stuff. What's the domain of that thing now? All reals. All reals. Now, here's the thing: how you have to actually check, and this is the this is the nasty part. Okay, it doesn't have fractions, so that's easy enough. But now, if it did, what you have to do is you have to actually go inside out on these problems. You have to start with what's inside. You have to look at whatever functions on the inside and figure out the domain of that thing separately. And so once you find the domain of that thing, then you look at the outside terms and see what was the domain of the f function. And then whatever those are, you so if there's numbers I have to throw out, that's fine, throw them out. Then go over here, and if there's any more numbers I have to throw out, you throw those out. And then you have to look at the final answer you simplified, and you should have to see if there's any more things that would have been thrown out. So you have to go inside out, it's like an onion. Inside out to see what exception um, is. I always go inside out, because the idea is that if you don't go inside out, you could potentially say, oh, I could use a number on the F, and then then go on the inside, and maybe that number wasn't used in G. The problem is you have to go inside out. So you want to start and work as small as the bit. That's what I want to do. Like an onion. Yeah, so, okay, but this is composites, right? We're plugging a function inside another. Let's do a couple more examples of this. Because this is the new stuff, right? This is the brand new thing we're doing. When are we going to do golf? That, this, oh, we can do that if you want to do that. Golf. So, golf. All right. All right, let's pick some new functions. I'm getting kind of bored. So, let's pick some new stuff here. And I'll get to the question of golf. Let's do that. Okay, all right. Um, let's do the function. Three x squared. Right. Seven. And let's go with x plus four. Okay. Here's what I'd like you to do. I would like to figure out the composite function of Goff. So, g composed of f, and the variable will be x's. I'm not going to be substituting anything in right now. And so the idea is that this thing means this. I'm taking g and I'm plugging the f function into it. So give it a little bit of a minute here if you want to write it down, because you know, some of you are like scrambling to take the notes down. So this is going to be my main thing. So I'm looking at the GE function, that's that one. So I'm going to be writing that one down, but taking out all the variables out of it. Okay, so I took out all the x's, because that's my main function. Now I'm going to take the f function, and we're plugging that into G. So this is my G function overall. That's what it looks like without the x on it. Uh, and I'm going to take the f function and plug it into it. That's my f function. Now that, that wasn't very complicated. That actually made this problem a lot easier. That I'm going that direction. If we had to go the other way, the other way, it'd be a lot longer. So this, so really on this problem, the parentheses not needed. I'm not even distributing anything through it, so I don't actually need the parentheses. Drop the parentheses. Connect the like term. All right, and then yeah, you combine like terms. So really, the, the final answer on this problem is just that. So I mean, it was it was very quick, very easy. There's no complicated math to do there. Because there's no numbers I had to distribute, there's no power, so I didn't have to worry about any of that. So all I had to do is get rid of the parentheses and combine like terms. So the final domain, well, the domain of the, the main function or the, the inside function, this is all real numbers. So I can use any number here. And now when I go to the outside, any numbers that were here, um, it would be all real numbers because it's still a function. And then the final composite one is all real numbers. So there was really no exception. We haven't had a fraction yet for doing this. We should probably do one all the fractions. 
Okay. Let's do one. 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 let us do one Let's put that on the bottom. So now we have some exceptions, and I want to do this function. We're going to do this in the positive. It's now a little bit harder now. Picking up the difficult. So we're doing composites, something inside of something else. So remember what this means. It means this, that the g function, since it's in the back here, this one is going in the f function. f is going to be composed with g in it. So it's like that. This is what it actually means. So whatever f function is, I will plug that in, or whatever the G function is, I'll plug that into the F function. Okay, so if we're going this, the G function is, uh, is the one I'm plugging in over here, so the F is the main one, so I'm going to write the F function down with none of, none of the X's on it. So I'm going to take out all the X's on the original function, because again, this is my main function here. And so now the thing I'm plugging in is the G into it. So the G is going to go here and here. So it's going to two different spots. Okay, so now that we have this, um, let's try to figure out um, kind of what we can get here. So um, simplifying this out, I need to just I need to foil this part, the x minus two squared, um, and then on the bottom I can just add those things together. Um, so, because I don't really actually need the parentheses, there's something to distribute over it, there's no power on it, so I can just combine the 3 and the negative 2. But on the top, I get 5 um, x squared minus 4x plus 4, that's all over x plus 1. We multiply everything by 5. Uh, and well, I got squared, so yeah, so. Minus 5x squared minus 20x plus 20, all over x plus 1. And I know if you factor it all the way out again, it just turns out to be this again, so don't try to factor it out. <laughs> so, I, I always have so many tries. If they foil all around, like, oh god, I gotta factor this part. Here's the start of it. Don't try. No, uh, there's always somebody that tries to look like, for it. I factor it. Alright, but, anyways. Let's talk about the exceptions. The exceptions have changed, right? The exceptions on what I was plugging in, that was all real numbers, so so far so good. But when I got to this part, I couldn't use negative 3. Negative 3 was an exception. And when I got to the final answer, negative 1 was an exception. So you have to throw out both of those numbers. So it's all real numbers, except, except uh, negative 3, or negative 1. That's your domain for this function. So you have to look at the original, the original function, and then the final one that you simplify because you will be changing it as you go, as I said before. All right, that's it for today. We're done. Yeah, the remaining 10 minutes of class, you can work on your page. Was anyone gone yesterday that did not receive draft paper? You need to draft paper. Who are you? We have the ten people in the back. Oh, they were good mentions. We were screaming at Todd. And another thing, grab paper. The reason we learned that day we grabbed that interstate banner hanging out. Holy blizzard! I wrote all my stuff. What's up with the precipitation? Oh, I wasn't there. I know. Is it precipitating this? They tried to grab the mic there. Yeah, give it to Q. Grab it. Yeah, more grab it. Give it to Q. Tell him Kelly made a fool out of him. I'll give it to Q. What do you do? Q will be like, Q will tell him. Q will tell him. I'm going to say something about him. Good job. 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 Good job.
We don't have a lot of brain cells in the bars that you do. I don't know how we can talk to that. I mean, I kind of can't. That's my boy, too. Not really, but I'll be the best. No, I can't. You just gotta ask. Just three times three, but the 12? I don't know. How many? Yes, learn. Really I'm hoping we don't rule. So he's going to be going off. Yeah. He's going to be going off. 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 He's better at killing oh, over instead of squaring that. Yeah, he can't square. Yeah, he can't square. Yeah, he can't square. Yeah, he can't. Yeah, he struggles at cubing. He's for chopping and bread. It's Kella. Kella. He, he did a project. He said he would buy Don Kelly. He would buy Kelly Cube. And he gave a whole presentation that it was Kelly Cube. Kelly Cube. We only got middle man here. I'm dropping by the last time. When has she done it? Every time I like do it, it says, "See you, B and B." So you have to get in the mic. I want it. Oh, bro. 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 He goes, gonna like the football team tonight. <laughs> 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 <laughs>